So last night I just saw Force Awakens and holy shit, it was awesome. For at least for me. Uh, hey everyone, this is Neo Reality Entertainment. Um, uh, like I said, I had come back from Force Awakens and I was and it was awesome for me. Uh, and as you already might have guessed by now, I have a thought, another thoughts video and our thoughts video with my friend Lean Deer. Um, where we talk about The Force Awakens, however, I wanted to give my individual thought on it, so, yeah, so, like, and there's gonna be heavy spoilers, so, if you don't want to be spoiled yet, if you don't, if you haven't watched the movie and you haven't been spoiled yet, please stop now before I go into, before I go into detail, okay, are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Luke Skywalker has vanished. Yeah, everyone knew that. Like, it was already hinted in the interview, so basically that was already spoiled. So, so we, like, <clears throat> so, like, we see the First Order, which is the successor to the Galactic Empire, or as it would have been called in the Expanded Universe, the, for the Imperial Remnant. And I might go into Expanded Universe lore a bit in this, in this video, so be very afraid. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, the First Order and the Resistance has risen as the two dominant factions. While there is the New Republic, they're not really seen as much in this movie. Uh, I hope to see more of it. I hope to see we see more of the New Republic in the later movies. Though we have to wait an additional two to four years for the last two movies of this seat of this trilogy. So, um... We first go to this scene with this old guy who I have no idea who he is, who, where he came from, or whatsoever. Like, every time I saw that old man for, like, the first five minutes on screen, I was like, wait, couldn't that have been, like, and this is a, and this is a complaint I had, though. It's really a minor complaint. It's just a fandom I wanted was, couldn't that have been Ahsoka? Like, that actually wouldn't make sense. Like, Ahsoka probably was keeping tabs on Luke, and she got killed by Kylo Ren. Like, that would have established Kylo Ren as this ultimate bad villain, and made people hate him. So, yeah, and Poe is captured during this Battle of Jakku, and you see, and the Stormtroopers are very humanized more in this one, and whereas in the original trilogy, they were more like a bunch of machines, cogs in the wheel. Whereas in this one, they're more humanized. Especially when you see um, later who would eventually become Finn. And thank God that wasn't his real name. It's something that Poe gave him during uh, when they were escaping. But I'll get to that in a minute. Um, there's a scene where um, you see a stormtrooper place his hand on Finn's helmet. And there's blood smeared on it. And I was like... Yeah, that's yeah. These stormtroopers are more human, so I was glad they did that. And I was, but I was also like, I was like, there were several times in this movie I wanted to scream and quote Film Brain and say symbolism because it's so fairly obvious there's symbolism going on in this movie, and. <clears throat> so Finn, who was originally known as FN two one eight seven, um doesn't open fire on these civilians whereas the other stormtroopers does and this is where he is um <clears throat> where he uh, where he starts to doubt the, the first order and decides to make a run for it because he's afraid and he looks and and there's a scene where he looks at Kylo Ren and Kylo Ren looks back on him and yeah, I could understand what they were saying while actually speaking dialogue. Uh, like, I felt like I could understand what he was saying. Like, I could sus sus suspect that Kylo Ren thought, thought he was going to turn on them eventually since he couldn't open fire on civilians. And Finn is horrified knowing, and Finn might be horrified that, um, they might, that he might be hunted down by Kylo Ren eventually. Like, I could speculate on that, but, uh... I hope, hope, hold hope that we can understand what was going on through their minds at the time. Then we meet Captain Phasma, and okay, I'm not really spoiling much. Uh, like, there's only one major spoiler, but Captain Phasma doesn't really do much in this movie. She just stands there, talks, then looks intimidating, then disappears, 
then gets captured, then lowers the shields, and that's pretty much it. And and before someone complains about Captain Phasma and her role, let me remind you that all of you, that everyone here was chanting for Boba Fett, and yet Boba Fett pretty much did the same thing. He didn't really do much. He just stood there and talked, rarely. And I'm not counting the prequels because, well... In the prequels, he was just a kid, but we're talking about the original trilogy. He just stood there and talked, very rarely. So, anyways, when Finn takes off his helmet, then we go to Rey, and she's on this old Star Destroyer. She's trying to make a living and surviving this rundown planet known as Jakku, which in Star Wars Battlefront is shown that Jakku was a ba major battle for the Galactic Civil War between the New Republic and the Galactic Empire, where pretty much that would be the end of the war, because the Empire would not want to make large-scale battles after this. So there's that. And there's all, then, like, opposed Joy BB-8 escapes with, for, with the map, to Luke Skywalker, and yeah, then that's where he meets Rey, and they develop a bond instantaneously. Like I thought, BBA was cute. Like, oh, he's so adorable. Like I just can't help but think, like, oh, that droid's so adorable. More adorable than R two D two. I gotta be honest. Yes, I went there. Sue me. So. Afterwards, Kylo Ren decides to interrogate Poe, who, um, decides to interrogate Poe, and, like, the scene is very dark, because, apart, because Poe managed to survive all conventional torture weapons on him, so, there is that, and, and also, when he uses the Force on him, Force Mind Trick, which I felt like, Okay, they're finally using Force Mind Trick correctly. It's not it's not a Jedi thing, it's also a Sith thing. Well, at least a dark side user doing it. And I just can't help but feel like, okay, how far will it be till you liquefy his brain? Because it looks like it's gonna hurt very, very badly. And allow me to quote the Joker from Suicide Squad. I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you really, really bad. <laughs> um, after Kylo Ren tortures Poe, um, Stormtrooper F FN2187, later known as Finn, helps defects and helps Poe escape, and because he says it's the right thing to do, and then they take a TIE fighter, blast some parts of the ship, and attack several of their fellow Stormtroopers, um, then they escape off the, off the, uh, they escape and are later shot down when Finn and Poe are arguing, saying Finn wanted to get out of here, out of the system, whereas Poe wanted to go back to Jakku, and they crash land into this barren desert where it's apparently the more unstable area. And I was like, huh. I mean, like, I know he's not really dead. I know Poe's not really dead because we see him later in the trailers in the movie, so that's pretty much a spoiler. So, yeah, I'm also curious how he got out alive. Like, they just mention it, they just don't really explain it, but, like, I'm sure they'll explain it in the sequels. Like, there's a lot of things about this movie that make me question things and why it wasn't explained, but then I'm like, oh, wait, they had two more movies in production. I'm sure they'll explain this. So, after Finn believes he's the only survivor... Um, he encounters Ray and BBA and sa and makes a lie saying he's part of the resistance. And the first order tracks Finn to the cell and launches an airstrike and an attack, forcing Ray, Finn, and BBA to steal a rundown ship. But before I get to that, like Ray's character, I gotta be honest, it was pretty awesome. Like how she's not how she doesn't like to be the doesn't like to be carried. She likes to do her own thing. She likes to put her own weight in the situation, and. And this movie is pretty hilarious at times. Like, there was a lot of hilarious moments. And that made me realize, you know, in episode 3, it was always gloom and doom. There was no humorous moment. 
And that could be made like, okay, the Jedi would portray too serious like, and the Sith were also serious. I mean, like, there's Emperor Palpatine doing his goofy antics, so that could be make an argument for that. Uh, but that's like way late into the movie. <laughs> oh man, Palpatine was so funny. Um, then they go to this very cool looking ship, then it explodes, and then Ray just says, Okay, we'll take the garbage one then. And then we see the Millennium Falcon, and I was like, The Millennium Falcon? Well, how did it get there? Who stole it? And, and, and they're chased around by TIE fighters, and like, and like, Ray's very good with this, huh? And like, she's struggling at first, but then seems to get the hang of it. It's almost like she'd been on that ship before. Like, she even said she doesn't know how she did it, and that can only be a tribute to one thing. He's Han she's Han Solo and Leia's daughter, also known as Jaina Solo. Yeah, it's kind of obvious at this point. Now, the Falcon breaks down, leaves them stranded. They are soon found by Han Solo and Chewbacca on board this ship for some reason. Talk about convenience. And Han and Chewbacca, and Han gives his famous, now famous line from the trailer say, Chewie, we're home. And Han explains to them that Luke has disappeared after an apprentice named Kylo Ren, who we all know now, who would later be revealed as someone else, after an apprentice had turned to the dark side and became Kylo Ren, and had killed all of Luke's apprentices that he had, and also destroyed everything that Luke had built for the New Jedi Order. And, yeah, what a dark way to go out. I will not lie. I wonder how that conversation went. Especially how Kylo Ren managed to turn to the dark side. Like, we're only given a few information, like, we'll possibly find out in the sequels. Yeah, get ready to hear me say we'll see in the sequels most likely. But um then we see Han and Chewbacca go to this planet that ha that apparently is a giant cantina pretty much at this point. Like there's a lot of references to episode 4 since JJ Abrams had said, "Oh, my favorite movie was episode 4 Star Wars, A New Hope." So there was expecting to be a lot of references, like when they could reference the Millennium Falcon as garbage. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they went there with Luke's, uh, what a piece of junk! And, yeah. And then there's, like, and then, like, when when they ask how did they get the Falcon, and she said she stole it from this guy, and Han says who stole it from that guy, who stole it from that guy, and, well, if you ever find the first owner, tell him I stole it back, and and Han is... Harrison Ford still delivers well as uh, Han Solo. I thought at times he probably didn't have it still, but turns out he really does still have it. <sighs> but Harrison Ford got his wish in this movie. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll get to that soon. So, like, um, when Finn kept lying, like, John Boyega playing as Finn was exceptional. Like, I really loved it. Like, yeah, I was really impressed by it. And I could somewhat, and I was glad that his real name isn't Finn. It's just a name given to him. So I was glad about that. So, I can't wait what his real name is. I hope it's awesome. And, meanwhile, at Starkill Starkiller Base... Huh, I wonder who also was named Starkiller. Glenn Merrick. I think that was pronounced right. <laughs> um... Kylo Ren talks to Supreme Leader Snoke, and he's also and also General Hux, who... Once again, is really hyped up, but is not really in the movie that much. In fact, the interaction between him and Kylo Ren, yeah, let's just be honest, it's Tarkin and Vader 2.0. They argue like an old married couple. No, I want to do this. No, I can do this. No, I can do this. No, 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 I can do this. That, that, that's pretty much the mentality I'm getting. They argue like an old married couple. And, the, and Kylo Ren, let's be honest, that guy was a badass. Like, at the beginning of the movie, like, he stopped a blaster bolt. 
Like, he stopped a laser fire, and I didn't think Jedi's could do... I didn't think Jedi or Sith Force Wheelers could do that. I just thought... I just thought that was kind of unavoidable. Like, but then I know that begs the question, wait, why didn't they do that in the Clone Wars? Or, like, why didn't they, like... Like, like, where they had um, huddled up together when they were surrounded in Episode 2, when they had deflected all their blaster balls with the Force and then pushed it back in a massive massive explosion. Like, I kept wondering, why didn't they do that instead of get killed? Huh. Now that's a plot hole to the prequels. And I'm pretty sure that was J.J. Abrams' intention since, well, it was reported he's not a big fan of the prequels. But, like I said, okay, fine. The prequels are not that good. I can admit that. And I still watch them because they get introduced me to Star Wars. They hold a special place in my heart. But, like, even I know there's a lot of interesting ideas George Lucas had. They were just executed very badly and possibly needed a better director and writer. So, um... <clears throat> So, like, when, huh, and then there's this robot when they go to the space cantina. Like, every time I looked at that robot, I was thinking, okay, um, did they cross, um, I can't remember her name, the, the robot from Portal and adding Destiny elements? Like, it just felt like that to me. Every time I saw that, I couldn't get my mind off of it. Like, it's a cross between Destiny and Portal, the video games. I was trying to wonder, what? And... Anyways, in Starkiller Base, um, Kylo Ren learns from Supreme Leader Snoke when they're giving the report with General Hux, who, once again, I just said, rarely does anything in this movie other than just shouts. So basically, you can cut him out. <laughs> um, Snoke goes ahead and reveals something that I felt like should have been saved for a little bit later in the movie. And I was like, I knew it, I knew it, I freaking knew it. I knew this was a fact. I knew Kylo Ren was Han Solo's son. But that now begs the question, um, why is he called, why isn't he called Lord Catarus? Or Jason Solo? Like, yeah, I'm a big Expanded Universe fan, sue me. Like, I'm giving the new Disney canon a chance, but like, every time when they bring back an Expanded Universe character... They just slap a different name on it and just say, Oh, it's a completely different character. Tell me. Tell me you did not get that vibe saying, Yeah, um, that's Jason Solo. If you, if anyone has ever read the books. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that have read the books or else there wouldn't have been protesting saying, Bring back the Expanded Universe. So, Kylo Ren is told, says that, Han Solo means nothing to me now. And I was depressing. And he has to kill him to overcome the call of the light side, or as I like to call it, the positive side of the force. So, and they arrive to the, so the Falcon crew meet, um, Maz Cantina, who, like I said, if you could replace her with Ahsoka Tano, that would have made more sense. Since Ahsoka knows who Lord Vader was, her former master, so... Once again, why didn't you just bring Ahsoka Tano into this movie? Like, I'm still complaining about that. <laughs> um, and plus, since who says, but, but Finn, however, decides to rather keep running since he's afraid, since all he's known is the First Order, and now he left that faction, and now there's nothing left for him in his eyes. So, Rey ventures into the vault and finds Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, and when she grabs the lightsaber, I was, exp like, I knew a horrible vision was going to happen. Like, we see Luke in R2-D2, which means R2-D2 is obviously not with Luke. I thought for sure that was the case. Then we see Kylo Ren in the dark side, and then we hear Lord Vader's breathing mask. Like, when I saw that, I was, like, thinking, like, shouldn't there have been more visions? Like, shouldn't Rey get more visions? Like, Darth Vader killing people with that lightsaber, his duel with Obi-Wan. Like, it wouldn't make more sense, in my opinion. Like, seeing all the horrible things Vader did in the name of that lightsaber before he transformed into the suit. And hear the echoing voices of, You brought him here to kill me! And all this dark stuff that happened in episode 3. 
<clears throat> she and she's afraid like yeah like she's afraid like any normal person would be after seeing that my fucked up imagery and Finn returns back after and here's what I was thinking like um the star killer race fires and they blow up the star system and three moons and I was like wait that planet looked like Coruscant and those three moon and Coruscant reportedly has three moons. At least I know from the expanded universe. I'm not sure they ever mentioned that in the new canon. Did they blow up Coruscant? Like, okay, I get it. The Coruscant and prequels were bad, but like, you just destroyed the capital of the Republic. And then I found out. Oh, okay, okay good. They didn't blow that up. Like, yeah, it was tragic to see that many lives destroyed, but like, okay, that wasn't Coruscant. Or else then the Republic would really be fucked up. They just can't help them in the system now. So, anyways, Finn comes back, sees the, sees the Starkiller base destroy these, these planets and stars. And Finn takes the lightsaber for safekeeping by, by uh, like, from Maz, who was apparently also strong in the Force. Like I said, it should have been Ahsoka Tano by now. Like, there were two times I thought Ahsoka Tano should have been in this movie. So, the First Order get tipped off by this by one of the cantina owners saying that uh, BB-8 was found and they have the plan, and she, and the, and the BB-8 droid has the plans, and then there's another cantina, cantina guy saying that, uh, called the Resistance, we found their droid, and once again, they reference Episode 4 by saying, we found the droid they're looking for. And I was like, this is not the droid you're looking for. Yeah, kind of obvious, everyone. So, they attack Tartanga, or Takodana, I think. I I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. And Finn, with the lightsaber, I was like a little worried that they might have made Finn too well in the lightsaber, considering what he's doing in the trailers. But really, they made him a rookie, and when he was fighting the Stormtrooper, who pulled out this this um, weapon, I, a Tofa slash electric staff, electro staff, kind of cross, and I was thinking to myself, wait. How come a stormtrooper knows how to do that? There are like no more Jedi's at this point. Like for as far as they know, a lot of Jedi just still be in hiding. So why are they trained to know that? How to combat a lightsaber wielder? That seems really convenient. Like, I mean, like if they had said, like I don't know. So, anyways, um, so Star Killer Base. Destroy, had destroyed um, a star system and its main planet, Hoshian Ho Prime, and Han, Chewbacca, this the cantina owners and the and the um, various people, and Finn battled the First Order with the help of the Resistance led by Poe, who somehow survived the crash on Jakku, and I'm trying to wonder how he even got off of Jakku. However, Rey encounters Kylo Ren, who I like once again. She pretty much met her brother. And, and, and also, um, so, like, here's what I'm also saying is, like, um, uh, let's see. Rey is captured by Kylo Ren after he pulls off this other badass moment where he, um, has the lightsaber close to her neck and, like, Okay, stop being badass, man. How am I supposed to hate you right now? You're being too awesome right now. You're being more awesome than Darth Maul right now. And you're talking. So, so like, Kylo Ren captures Rey, and Finn is an emotional distraught, and wants to get her back, and that kind of barely spells out, Love interest! Yeah. And once again, I have to also say that um, when we saw Kylo Ren interrogate um, Rey, like, he takes off his mask. I thought, like, that was a little too early. I was thinking that Kylo Ren, during the duel with Finn, he would actually take off the, um, cut off the mask of Kylo Ren and reveal his face. But they didn't do that. 
I was really expecting. I was really thinking they were going to do that. But so Kylo Ren interrogates Rey and and then there's a force battle going on between them. Like Rey doesn't know how to control the force, so it's really unstable for her. Kylo Ren is using the force and he's much more controlled. However, all this raw power from Rey is enough to overwhelm Kylo Ren's abilities. So he reports and he reports to Master Snoke who is talking to General Hux, saying uh, he felt like it was unnecessary to get the droid. And like, okay, Tarkin, can you stop acting like an old Mary couple with Kylo Ren or Darth Vader at this point? Like, you're pretty much kind of acting like this old Mary couple that's arguing constantly. So, I was like, okay, so... Master Snoke is disappointing Kylo Ren, and Kylo Ren says, "I can, I can still do something about this. I, we, we just need to get the information out of her." And then Ray uses mind trick on the stormtrooper, saying, "You un, you unhook these cuffs and walk out the door. Then later, drop your gun." And he actually did that, and it was hilarious. She had to do it three times. I'm glad they didn't do it right away for her, so she's still developing her force powers. Kylo Ren comes back to the prisoner room and discovers that, and once again, Kylo Ren does handles things differently than Vader. Vader would most likely brood and then just walk off. And while Kylo Ren is more unstable, he would later he would just lash out on anything and everyone. Like in the beginning of early in the movie, he went ahead and cut and cut up this control panel and then forcibly choked a, a, an imperial officer. And he didn't use force choke; like he used force pull and then started choking him with his fist. And I was like, okay, that's much more. That's a much different way. Like I can't imagine Anakin slash Vader being the only ones that die, but it, they make it look better. But um, I'm glad they didn't do the same thing with Kylo Ren. They like did a homage to it, but they kind of put their own take on it. So I was glad they did that. And so, like, during the Resistance base, Han is reunited with Leia, and Chewbacca and Finn are brought to the Resistance base on Decor. And BBA encounters RTD2, who C3PO, who appeared out of nowhere referencing episode 5 when they Han and Leia first kissed, um, who said, R2D2 has been deactivated since since Luke disappeared. And I was like, why? You copped out there. Like, I thought R2D2 was with Luke. I really thought that. And, like, like, I thought Luke was with R2-D2, and R2-D2's been deactivated for 30 years? What the fuck? Like, it, like he couldn't, like, I'm pretty sure Luke would have told R2-D2 to look after Leia. Like, Leia can take care of herself, but he'll still do it because, well, they're brother and sister, and he'll just do it out of concern, out of, because it's his brotherly duties to protect his sister. And, like, yeah... Archie Chish has been dormant for 30 years? I don't get that. So the resistance, and we see Admiral Akbar for like five seconds, and I was really, really thinking that the, he was gonna do, it's a trap! So, like, so, but they didn't reference episode six in this movie, so, yeah. So, Starkiller Base is preparing to open fire on Decor and destroy the Resistance, and the Resistance devices a plan to sneak attack onto the surface and lower the planetary shield so the fighters can attack the super weapon's weak spot. And once again, I have to ask, how incompetently stupid are the Imperial Technicians? Do they hire the same guy who built the Super Star Destroyer and the Death Star twice? Like, okay, I could get the Death Star, there was a huge amount of openings, so they had a shield... And the shield was taken out, so I can give him a pass on that. But for the for the Super Star Destroyer, okay, I have a hard time buying that part. Like, like I said in my thoughts video for Return of the Jedi, like, wait, you crash landed, uh, an A-wing crashes into the bridge, and all of a sudden the ship can't work anymore. Like, I get the bridge is pretty important, but yeah, when the ship like not crash so soon, like they gave indications, but. Yeah, shouldn't that have not crashed so soon? So, like, that happened. And along with that, uh, so, like, Finn says he can do the job, and Han and Chewbacca crash land on the snowy planet of Starkiller Base. 
And it reminded me a bit of the Halo rings where they had life to it. And it wasn't just a big giant machinery. It had some life in it. So, and we get another funny moment between Han and Finn. Where Finn says, uh, sanitary duty. And, and like, sanitary duty or janitary duty. And Han and him and him are arguing, saying, like, what? You did What? <laughs> and it's just so funny to see them, like, they interact, and it's just so hilarious. Um, oh, I also mentioned that Ray, that Ray now knows that Finn was part of the First Order, wasn't, and wasn't part of the Resistance, so that happened. Like, I keep getting this feeling like Ray and Finn are going to be a couple by the end of this trilogy, so, yeah, that's most likely going to happen. So, um, and before... They left Han and Leia share this moment of sadness and regarding their son falling to the dark side, and and then like I was like, man, that's a touching moment, like yeah, like the sense of regret, like wishing they never took their son to Luke and whatnot. Like I don't think they harbor resentment for Luke because Luke probably didn't know what would happen, and such they thought otherwise. Like, it was pretty sad. And, and yeah, like, so Finn, Ch Chewbacca, and Han are attack are sneaking into the space. And they capture Captain Phasma. And once again, like I said, her only role is to get captured. And, and also, I was thinking, like, when she lowered the shields and Finn turned around, I was, like, thinking, okay, she's gonna lower, she's gonna raise the shields back up and then call in stormtroopers. Nope, that doesn't happen. Like, that would have been an obvious villain tactic, so shame on me, right, for thinking that was gonna happen. And then they decided to shove her into a trash compactor. Like, I think they just gave indication that they were going to do that. Referencing episode four again. And Finn also kept mocking Captain Phasma by saying, Who's the boss now, huh? Who's in charge now? And, like, yeah, Captain Phasma is going to be Boba Fett's to Han Solo on, in, the, in this trilogy. Like, Captain Phasma is going to be what Boba Fett was to Han Solo in the original trilogy. Um, so, yeah, I expect that. And that's where Captain Phasma pretty much disappeared, so her role's pretty much cut out. What the fuck? And so, and then they, they reunite with Ray. It almost turns into a shootout, but then Ray like doesn't fire at the last second. Thank God. And Han and Chewbacca are setting up explosions to create an opening in the base, as the X wings cannot penetrate the weapon. Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren refer, comes in to stop them, but he's marching off somewhere. And then Han confronts Ren by addressing him by... And this is where I started to say, Oh, dear God, you're not even being creative at this point. He calls him Ben. Ben. Like, I'm not saying that the name is not common. Like, we have an expanded universe character named Ben. And also, Obi-Wan used that name. But, like I said, just call him Jason. Like, he's obviously Jason Solo. And also, Ben is already taken. Not by Obi-Wan, by, by Luke's son. Ben Skywalker in the Expanding Universe. Now you're just being lazy. And then Han tries to convince him to turn back to the light or the positive and whatnot. And we get this touching moment between him and between father and son. Like, Kylo Ren knows what... Like, part of Kylo Ren is fighting himself. Like, he see Like... They gave a hint in the movie that Kylo Ren would have this problem, the call of the light side, and you see this um, connection between Han and and that and Han and Kylo Ren or Ben Solo, and and you get this moment of yeah, there's a conflict going on. Like, but I'll get to the next part in a minute. But like, you start to see him, Kylo Ren, see tears build up in his eyes. Explain that he doesn't want to do this, and and like, and like for a moment it felt like the light side in him came out, and and you saw this moment of like he was back for a temporary time, and when the sun got drained out of power from the Star Killer base, I was like symbolism, 
and the darkness had tra had trapped the light side again, and Kylo Ren shocks the world by killing Han Solo. Yep, Han Solo is dead. He is not coming back, and he falls into the reactor shift. And I was like, damn! But I was also like, do it, Disney. I fucking dare you. I fucking dare you to have the balls to do it. Do it! Do it! Ah, I knew it! So, Harrison Ford got his wish. I bet he's happy about that. Chewbacca gets erased and activates the detonators and bombs are exploding and the X-Wings damage the weapons, starting a chain reaction that will destroy the Starkiller base. Meanwhile, Kylo Ren, who surprisingly was super fast in this scene now that I think about it, chases Finn and Rey onto the surface and Rey is forced pushed into a tree and is knocked unconscious and Finn tries to fight Ren with Anakin's lightsaber. And the duel is pretty realistic. It wasn't really choreographed like in the prequels where, where that made the prequels a little bit fun with the lightsaber battles. But, um, when, but, but, um, and Kylo Ren was shot in the stomach by Chewbacca, by his bowcaster, which I gotta complain, like, isn't it usually green, not red? In the Expanding Universe it was green, but why is it red now? I thought red represented the evil side and green was justice. And the Rebels. Okay. Yeah, I'm nitpicking at this point, at that point. So, um... <clears throat> so, Finn gets a couple of good shots at Kylo Ren. And, and Kylo Ren is constantly pounding on his stomach where blood's coming out. Like, he's trying to get... Like trying to be at a hundred percent, but he can't. So he so Finn gets a couple of shots in it. And okay, the cross guard saber is pretty useless. Like he like it only used to like cut into Finn's shoulder a bit, but that's pretty much it. It doesn't like deflect a lightsaber when it's trying to attack from the side. So or like they didn't like try to do a scene where where someone tries to cut off his hand and the lightsaber deflects it. The the sides don't deflect it. They didn't do that. Like that was like if they were gonna do that, that would make the lightsaber more important. But if you took out the lights, the cross guard part, then yeah, the lightsaber is just a lightsaber. It's nothing really special. Um, Ray uses the force and takes the lightsaber and overpowers Ren. Sends with the help of the force. And some people like one one of my friends. Lean Deer complained about that, like, how did Ray get so good with that? But then I told him in the Our Thoughts video that, um, that, uh, oh, oh, maybe because Kylo Ren got a couple of shots in him, he couldn't be, he wasn't at 100%. If he had been at 100%, then Ray probably wouldn't have won. And then you see this 10 second stare down between her and Kylo Ren, and that just gave me the indication, yeah, they're brother and sister, we get it. Like, you, you're giving the obvious hints. So, then, like, Ray overpowers Kylo Ren, and the planet starts to collapse before Ray could strike him down. Like, cuts off his leg and I think part of his arm. So, expect robotic parts to come in. <laughs> if he survived that explosion. Like, we didn't see him escape or General Hux escape, so we're just supposed to be assuming that, yeah, they escaped. And... And also, uh, so Chewbacca gets the Falcon ready. They escape with Vin, who's still wounded and cut in the back. And the planet is destroyed. And I gotta be honest, the way they destroyed the planet was kind of creative. Like, I've seen planets get destroyed by being blown up, thrown into the sun, but never seen a planet become the sun. Like, that's what happened. Like, I think all that energy they have for the sun taken, it built a new sun and therefore a new star. Which means there's light back in the darkness. I think that was the obvious metaphor. Like how the ship, how the planet was um, representing cold, darkness, and all things evil. And the and the light shows in the end. So that's my assumption. That's my metaphor theory. So there's that. And as the crew, as Finn is taken to medical ward and he's still alive. The Resistance celebrates victory. Leia, Chewbacca, and, ha and Rey mourn the loss of Han Solo. RGG2 suddenly awakens, and they really need to explain that in the future sequels, and reveals that he has the remainder of Luke's location. And I gotta be honest, I was like, convenient! 
No, that's very fucking convenient. And it's assumed Kylo Ren might have escaped beforehand, like... Master Snoke reports to tells General Hux before the planet collapses that it's time for the final completion of his training. And I was like, okay, what is it? And so I can't wait to see what that does. Um, <clears throat> so, like, uh... Okay, now I got, now I got it. Um, after they mourn the laws of Han, R2 G2 suddenly awakens, reveals that he has the remainder of the, of the map to Luke's location, and afterwards, when BB-8 reveals, finds the final piece of the map, since his was a broken piece of it, it connects, and then we find the location of Luke, and Ray, Chewbacca, and R2 G2 take the Falcon, while Finn is in a coma, I think, or unconscious still, from the battle he had with Kylo Ren, and Follow them out to a distant planet. There, Ray discovers after taking a mountain trip, pretty much, discovers Luke and presents him with Anakin's lightsaber, and that's where the movie ended. Now, I just gave you complete over overbearing of the plot and some and my thoughts on it. Now, let me get to the very positive stuff. Like Kylo Ren was a badass. The characters were so well. Han Solo, Harrison Ford, Mark Han. And, like, Mark Hamill was only in there for, like, a simple amount of time. Um, so, well, I can't give a final opinion on Luke. So, Han Solo was great in this movie. Sad that he had to go, but Harrison Ford gets what he wants. And, and General Leia Organa, not Princess Leia, um, and she's committed in ever to the cause of the Resistance. And... Well, I can understand why she's heartbroken considering their son is part of the are part of the first order. And Kylo Ren was awesome, Ray was awesome, Daisy Ridley stole the show in my opinion. John Boyega as Finn was a, an exceptional choice. Um Poe Damon was Poe Damon was great in this movie. Um Oscar Isaac. Uh Okay, like I got to say Maz and that late and that guy we saw at the beginning of the movie yeah, totally could have been a Sogatano, in my opinion, in those two scenes. It could have been a Sogatano at the beginning of the movie, then gets killed by Kylo Ren, or a Sogatano advising, um, advising, uh, Rey to just let the Force flow through her and let it in. Like, I felt like that could have been it, but they didn't do that. Like, I just felt like that. Supreme Leader Snoke, he was not really as hyped up, so that hit, so the limited timing he was given was was well uh well ex was exceptional and <clears throat> and like and Supreme Leader Snoke like that his appearance I think that might have ruined the Jar Jar Binks' evil theory. <laughs> I still don't get it. And so and General Hux, like I said, like all he did was shout and argue with um Kylo Ren at times. C-3PO, you could obviously cut him out, but since it's R2-D2 and C-3PO, you can't really picture that. And Chewbacca was great. All the characters were great. Every one of them was great. Like, this movie was awesome. And the movie was very practical effect-based. Like, there was only 1% of CGI, in my opinion, besides the X-Wings and TIE Fighters. But, like... But, like... Like, Supreme Leader Snoke and Maz... Maz uh, were the only CGI motion-based captured characters in a world of practical effects, like I could tell. But, like, even then it didn't stand out to me. Like, I could tell, but it didn't really stand out for me. So, I was really loving this movie. And also, um... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> and how they got Anakin's lightsaber, like, they, like, we see how what happened to Anakin's lightsaber in episode 5. So, it's Obvious to assume they went to Bespin and Cloud City, or went to Bespin if it fell off the ship, fell off the city in the sky, and went to the planet. Like, we haven't seen what the planet's surface looks like, so we could just assume that. And, like, overall, this movie was awesome. Everything about it was awesome. I cannot wait for the future sequels. Um, I cannot wait what the anthology films have in store for us. It's just going to be a wild ride. I have to wait two more years for this next episode. And I have to wait another year to see the anthology films.
to start watching the anthology of Star Wars. So I can't wait for that. Well, everyone, this was Neo Reality Entertainment. Those were my thoughts on Star Wars The Force Awakens. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. And stay tuned for more.